morning, everyone. Happy New Year's Eve, everyone. Happy New Year's Eve. It is so good to be with all of you guys on New Year's Eve, the last day of the year of 2023. God's faithfulness to see us through to the end, right? Another year, another year because of God's faithfulness. I will not stop giving him praise for that. It's only by his mercy and his grace that we are even here right now. It is a gift. I was in tears last night with my husband just remembering what God brought us through and I almost died. And I, well, I did die, but then I was brought back. But like, I almost didn't make it. But God, God intervene. God is so merciful. He wants us here. He delights in us. He has a purpose and a calling for each and every one of us. We are not forgotten. And so just remember that. Remember the faithfulness of God to see you through to another year. We're going to give thanks today. I want you guys all to stand with me. We're going to posture our bodies and posture our hearts to just welcome in the Lord. What I felt like for this morning is that we were going to start by praying in the Spirit. I just acknowledge the Holy Spirit right now in this place. Holy Spirit, we honor you. We give you glory and praise. This is your house. This is your home. This is your church. I thank you so much for what you're already doing in this place. And if you don't pray in the spirit, I want you to say yes and amen. I want you to come into agreement for what we're praying in the spirit right now. Praying in the spirit is the perfect will of God. It is the perfect will of God for Zion Church. It is the perfect will of God for this morning. It is the perfect will of God for each and every one of you individually. It's the perfect will of God for your families, for your marriages. He knows what you need right now. He knows where you're at right now. So pray in the Spirit. Pray in the Spirit. Zephaniah 3.9 for at that time I will change the speech of the peoples to a pure speech that all of them may call upon the name of the Lord and serve him with one accord. Ephesians 6.18, pray in the spirit on all occasions and at all times. Stay alert and be persistent in your prayers for all the believers everywhere. Romans 8, 26 through 27, in the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us through wordless groans. And he who searches our hearts knows what the mind of the Spirit is, because the Spirit intercedes for God's people in accordance with the will of God. Ephesians 5, 17 through 19. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. And do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery. But be filled with the Spirit. Be filled with the Spirit. Be filled with the Spirit. Filled with the Spirit. Addressing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Singing and making melody to the Lord with all your heart. But, be, but you, beloved, Jude 1, 20, building yourself up in, the, in your most holy faith and praying in the Holy Spirit. We pray in the Holy Spirit right now. We bind the fear of man. Fear of man, go. We bind the spirit of fear, go. We bind the spirit of religion, go. In Jesus' name. I release the spirit of courage. I release the spirit of boldness. I release the spirit of faith. I release the spirit of, 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 of amazing faith in this room right now. Thank you, Lord. Yes and amen. Yes and amen. We come into agreement right now. Yes and amen. Yes and amen. With the perfect will of God right now. As I speak right now, Holy Spirit, beloved Holy Spirit, fall upon your people. Fall upon your people. Fall upon your people, beloved Holy Spirit. Shatara Rabasitia Katara Rabakiri Yanana 
Shiri. Boldness, courage, fearless faith, fearless faith. You know what they need, Holy Spirit. These are your children. You know what they need today. Thank you, Lord. We come in agreement with the will of God. We come into agreement right now with the perfect will of God for each one of our lives. Righteous strongholds, righteous strongholds, righteous strongholds, righteous strongholds, righteous strongholds, righteous strongholds, righteous strongholds. Courage for the year ahead. Courage for the year ahead. Boldness for the year ahead. 2024 is going to be a year of great faith. Great faith. Great faith. Spirit of unbelief, go. Spirit of unbelief, go. Spirit of unbelief, go. In Jesus' name. Bind us together in love, Holy Spirit. Bind us together in love. One spirit, one accord. One spirit, one accord. One spirit, one accord. Holy Spirit, we love you. Holy Spirit, we love you. Holy Spirit, we honor you. We honor you, Holy Spirit. We honor you, Holy Spirit. We love you, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, have your way in this place. Holy Spirit, have your way in this place. These are your people. This is your church. Fall upon the hearts of your people today, Holy Spirit. Come and have your way. I pray in these last days that you would pour out your spirit upon all flesh. Pour out your spirit upon all flesh, on the young and the old your spirit pour out your spirit afresh today lord renew a right spirit within us renew a right spirit within us jesus yes god we welcome you in this place come and have your way come and have your way lord god whatever it looks like today whatever it looks like today holy spirit come and have your way this is your house these are your people thank you lord I bless your mighty name. I bless your mighty name. Kianama katara raba shitia katara raba shiriria na 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 ma siriria. Kiriria na 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 ma kuria. Kiriria na 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 ba kasa katara raba kuzia katara raba kiriria. Iriria na 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 ma shiriria. Keep praying in the spirit. Keep praying in the spirit. Keep praying in the spirit.
moment's not for our mental understanding, it's for Jesus' glory. Sing out in the Spirit.
I've got my hands on the plow, Lord, and I won't look back. I'm yours, I'm yours, I'm yours, I'm yours forever, forever, forever. I'm yours.
exists, Lord. You're why this house functions. You are everything to us, Lord. You are everything. 
everything to us, Jesus. You set us free and make us captive to your love. Your perfect love chases down all fear and crushes it. Your perfect love crushes all fear. So that all we're left with is first love and the fear of God.
fixed on you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus, that I am no longer a slave to fear. I'm going to share this with all of you because my heart began to pound when the Lord put it on my heart but I've been battling a spirit of anxiety lately, like like I never have before in my life. And, um, and I don't know why the Lord wants me to expose myself like this this morning, except for that it might help somebody in here. And I just declare that I am no longer a slave to fear. I am no longer a slave to fear. Because I've been chosen 
redeemed, reconciled to the Father, set free by His love. Yes, yes. I've been born again into a family. It's your blood, Jesus, that now flows through my veins. I thank you, Lord, that you break every chain. You break every shackle, you break every bondage, Jesus, by the holy, most beautiful name and the blood of Jesus. I just declare freedom over every single person in this place today. I say freedom by the power of the blood of Jesus, by his most beautiful, holy name, freedom from every anxiety, freedom from every addiction, freedom from every bondage, freedom from every fear. In the name of Jesus, perfect love. He loves you with perfect love. And perfect love casts out all fear. It casts out, out in the name of Jesus. We say out in the name of Jesus by his love and the power of his blood. Out in the name of Jesus. All fear has to go. We have not been given a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. So I pray that we recognize that thing and we give it no quarter, we give it no inch, we give it no ground. We say no, in the name of Jesus I cast you out. That thought, out in the name of Jesus, get behind me. The Lord rebuke you, Satan. He says, the Lord rebuke you, Satan. The Lord rebuke you, O Satan, accuser. You have no quarter here, you have no ground here. In the mighty name of Jesus, freedom today for every one of your people from all anxiety and fear. We thank you, Lord Jesus. <laughs> we have a good Father. We have a good Father. Thank you, Jesus. just want us to sing this. It's really easy. And then I'll give it back to Mary. Go ahead, Jack. But I feel like the Spirit of the Lord through Mary just reminded me of a song. All fear must go now because your perfect love's my home now. All fear must go now. All fear must go now. Your perfect love's my home.
ourselves that it was for freedom that Christ set us free. So we will stand firm and we will not submit again to a yoke of slavery. We will not go back. We will not go back. We will not go back in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Separate us from your love. Come on, get those kids up here. What can separate us from your love? Not death, not life, no nothing in between. them in every step. I pray, Lord, that with every breath they would remember you. They're little torchbearers. So I saw a vision of you. I don't know if you've ever watched the Olympics, but before they start the games, there's like a week of running. There's a week of running where runners pass the torch to each other. So they run for like 24 hours and then they hand it to the next person and they end up crossing a continent to come into this big arena. And the way I see you is torch bearers for Jesus. And I see you setting that last torch to the gigantic candelabra that will beckon the return of Jesus. And I know this might not mean much to you right now, but I'm saying this mostly for the parents because the fire that you carry for Jesus in your hearts, you touch your child's heart and you light the flame for them. And I just want to encourage that. I want to honor that. It's beautiful. And I pray, Lord, that you would give them endurance to run the race, Lord, to beckon your return, Lord, to hasten your coming, Jesus. And I ask, Lord, that you just keep every one of these children in your will until then. Lord, raise them up strong, a people for your own possession. We thank you, Jesus. And I pray, Lord, that as they go down to their classes this morning, that they have open ears and fertile soil in their hearts for the seed to fall, good soil, that they would be taught and they would learn. And I pray for the teachers even this morning, Lord, that they would hear your voice and speak it to your children. In Jesus' name, amen.
really fast. church celebrates New Year's Eve. We celebrate Jesus. The world celebrates the world, but the church celebrates the King.
this at the altar. I'm not taking this into the next year. No, 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 no. a calf released from the stall. Like a calf released from the stall. You have no idea what it means to be undignified before the Lord until you look like a little calf released from the stall, hopping and dancing. Because you've been set free, you've been born again to a living hope that does not perish, spoil, or fade. You're, you're thoroughly washed from your sin. Thoroughly, thoroughly, thoroughly washed from your sin so that not even the residue or stain or leftover of the sin remains. He doesn't even remember your sin after you've confessed it. Oh, oh. Oh, oh. The kids need a youth pastor. Aren't you the youth pastor? The kids need you too.
communion right now. I want to feast on the Lord right now. So, as you're willing and as you're ready, come up. Come up and take the elements of the Lord back to your seat. And we're going to pray. And we're going to delight ourselves in the Lord. And we're going to feast on his faithfulness. We're going to let him heal us and cleanse us and deliver us and soothe us and satisfy us and do whatever he loves to do with us because he knows he's the only one worthy. come to your table, Father. You said our joy would be overflowing. You said your yoke was easy and light and enjoyable. You're not a dull God. You are not a boring God. You are not a dull God. You're the most exciting entity, power, spirit, personality in existence. You would not have created humankind unless you had something good to enjoy. We come to enjoy you today. We come for the sake of Jesus getting all of the glory and all of the fame and all of the honor. Because it's all about your name, Jesus. I know there's needs in this room today. I know there's sickness. I know there's oppression, but I don't want you to ask the Lord for anything. I don't want you to bring your need before the Lord. He already knows it. I want you to delight yourself in the Lord. In communion, I want you to just celebrate Him. Celebrate what He did on the cross. That's enough. Celebrate the victory of His body, hanging there, bruised and broken, bleeding to death. Let's celebrate what He already accomplished. He knows every need of yours. And I just feel an anointing over you to not have to bring your need before the Lord. Just delight yourself in the Lord. He'll give you the desires of your heart. What's, what's the word? Delight yourself in the Lord. That's the command. And the promise is, I'll give you what you desire. <laughs> delight yourself in the Lord. Delight yourself in the Lord. Thank him for the blood shed on the cross. Jesus, we thank you for your life laid down, for the joy set before you. You saw something in us. You saw some sort of glory and treasure in the trash. You saw something of value when we were covered in sin. You saw something. You saw something. You saw what your love could do to our lives. We celebrate the body and the blood of Jesus this morning. We celebrate the table of the Lord without which we cannot truly get nourishment anywhere else other than from this table. Delight yourself in the Lord. Say, Lord, I love you. Lord, I yearn for you. Lord, shake my life with the power of your presence. If there's anything, as you celebrate the Lord, that you need to confess before him right now, just lay it down. Say, Lord, I renounce this. I'm sorry. I repent of this. I know that you are a holy, holy God, and I want to be clean today. Wash me thoroughly from all my iniquity. Cleanse me by your mercy. May the Lord cleanse you and empower you today to be helplessly head over heels in love with him and him alone and him alone and him alone. In Jesus' name, I bless you as you receive the body of Jesus and the blood of Jesus. Go ahead and receive. Thank you. Thank you for healed diseases. Thank you for broken oppression. Thank you for the freedom 
and the joy that your spirit brings as we receive with grateful hearts today. songs in the spirit. Abba, Father, you're my plan. Let's take our delight in the Lord to a new level in 24. <laughs> Let's take a risk with God. Let's trust him to satisfy areas of our lives that we've never allowed him to satisfy before. Let's allow the love of the Father poured out for you in Christ Jesus to satisfy areas of your life you've never trusted Him in before. You're my pleasure. I will feed you with manna from heaven. It's my presence of a Father. You're my pleasure. I will feed you with manna from heaven. It's my presence of a Father, you're my pleasure. I will feed you with manna from heaven, it's my presence. Water from the rock. Water from the rock, water from the rock, there's water from the rock, his name is Jesus. Water from the rock, water from the rock, water from the rock, his name is Jesus. Abba, Father, you're my Water from the rock, water from the rock, yeah. with his love and his joy causing you to trust again causing you to believe again 
causing you to draw close again. to pour out new wine. Break us out of the fear of man. Break us free from the control of the flesh. Break us free from the mindsets of ministry that tradition and theology has put upon us that's kept us from loving and loving him in a deeper way. Pouring out new wine an abounding grace to empower us to do things we've never done before in the name of Jesus. To go farther with Jesus than we've ever gone before. To stay a little longer with Him than we've ever stayed before. We can't do it without Your grace this year, Lord. We just can't. We have nothing in and of ourselves to love You this year or this upcoming year. We need You. Holy Spirit, we need You to teach us. We need You to show us. Holy Spirit, we need you to search us and know us. Holy Spirit, we need your hand upon our lives. Teach us how to love Jesus. Trust us with Jesus. Impart to us Jesus. Entrust to us Jesus. Form in us Jesus. Empower us with Jesus. Lavish upon our lives Jesus. 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 all day with these two guys. You guys have an anointing to unlock doors in the presence of the Lord that I can't unlock. And then I get in there and I don't know how to get out. So, just say, Holy Spirit, help me live in the love of Jesus. Help me function in the joy of the Lord. Maybe then I'll overcome sin real easily. Maybe then temptation will seem a whole lot weaker the next time it comes around because there's way too much intoxicating, thrilling joy that I'm having with friendship with the Holy Spirit. That's right. continue to love on him. I do want to get into the word. I do want to get into the word just for a little bit. We got 40 minutes. I don't even have to preach fast. I might though. I might. So good. Dominic, Justin, thank you guys for loving on Jesus with me. Thank you for loving on Jesus. Man, man, man. Hey, Justin, while you were playing, did you hear anything or see anything that you want to release or word of knowledge or prophetic? <laughs> you usually do, and then yeah. it stays hidden for a couple weeks, and yeah. then it comes out. <laughs> anything. I, I just, Any I, I, edifying word? Yeah, okay, yeah, there were, co- there, there were a couple things. Um, uh, you want to come up here and say it? Or uh, sure, I guess, yeah. Um, well, I was... Uh, yeah, somebody, somebody came home today. That was one thing. Somebody came home. Somebody came in the room really not believing so much right now, um, having uh, uh, like a really, really deep hidden sin. And uh, Jesus just like met you today. And so I was celebrating that. And I don't like want anyone to raise their hand. <laughs> like, that was me. But uh, that's, what, that's, that's basically what I saw. And then I actually felt like uh, Jesus came into the room and just all kinds of healings and yeah. emotional breakthroughs were happening. Uh, and uh, um, I was going to say that he wanted some people to give testimony of what happened in the last 30 minutes, but that would basically ruin your sermon. <laughs> so, but you asked. 
I was sitting down. You asked, so <laughs> there it is. That's all. That's all I heard. Yeah. You know what? Uh, the word, the word today. We need the word today. But I just want to. Make, let's do five minutes, Steve. Come on, Steve. I'm gonna testify some. Come on up here on the. Yeah. I while Justin was playing. I felt the wooing of the Holy Spirit, the, the wooing of the Bride of Christ. As he was playing, he would, he would play and bring a forceful note up front, and then it would start to fade back. It was like the wooing of the Holy Spirit. And as he played that, I just, oh, Lord, that Jesus spoke to the woman at the well, they will worship me in spirit and in truth. I just felt that powerful wooing. And then I felt, because uh, Justin is one with his wife, that as he's worshiping here, by the Spirit, waves of his wooing are going forth to his wife, even though she's not here. As you're faithful to minister unto the Lord, I just, I thought, wow, that is so awesome. That truth about being one. Yes, our, there's, there's an interchange when we, when we come before the Lord that, that blesses our marriage and blesses our mate. And I was just overwhelmed with that. And, and I look forward to more of, of, the, of entering into the wooing of, the, of his Holy Spirit, of the bride of Christ. When, when G, remember when Jesus came in, in uh, Song of Solomon, he came uh, to that door that night that she was asleep and she was slumbering and, and, and he, he took a hold of the handle, but she was kind of sleepy. You know, we're a little sleepy in this world in relation to the things of the Spirit. And then he left and she went and there was frankincense. I think it was the smell of frankincense on that. And you know what interesting thing about frankincense? You don't smell it until it's burning. That's us. As we lay ourselves in, 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 the, in the tabernacle, there's the, there's the table of incense. And as we lay ourselves upon the altar and let the Lord consume us, it gives off a sweet-smelling savor unto the Lord. Oh, he's just delighted with that. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, Steve. One more. Thank you. Such a good word. He's wooing us this year. Come on. He's wooing us this year. Michael. Uh, so I have uh, some stuff that I'm, I'm trying to figure out. Part of it's health, um, and part of it is uh, just uh, internal questions and what have you. Um, and I felt like I got a very strong indication that the stuff that I'm dealing with is not related to anything in my mind or any like uh, emotional healing that I need or anything like that. It's just discipline. It's, it's, it was very clear this is a season of engaging in discipline. And that was that answers a lot of questions. It makes it really, really simple for me. And the reason why I know that that word is from the Lord, because as soon as I heard that word, you quoted my favorite verse, Psalm 37, 4. Take delight in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. So good. That's so good. When we're in times of spirit, the will of God gets clearer. Our passions get defined, our desires, our appetites get dealt with in his presence, and uh, you really don't know who you are or what you want until you get with him, and that's why we have these times in the spirit with the Lord, so that he's not quenched like he's been in so many churches and in my life and, and in my own life quenched, and the Holy Spirit wants time with us, and uh, we don't want to quench him. Slavik, were you raising your hand or just saying an amen? What are you? I know you're always manifesting Jesus. You're always moving something. Yes. I just want to be obedient, you know? So I had, I had this word while we're worshiping. Like, this is for some people that, like, 2024, and it's like the upcoming year. And for some people that are, like, fearful, afraid 
of the upcoming year. Uh, it could be financial, health, things that are upcoming that you're afraid, like what's going to be, you know, 2024. Is the economy going to turn bad on me or like how am I going to get through this year? I just want to sh share while we are worshiping, just the Lord wants to just comfort you that it's going to be a good year for you. That God has got to strengthen you. He's got to restore your health. He's got to restore your finances in the areas of your walk. So, and I just want to just read Psalms 105. I was reading this last night. It says, uh, oh, give thanks to the Lord. Call upon his name. Make, his known, uh, make his, him known his deeds among the people. Sing to him. Sing psalms to him. Talk of his wondrous works. Glory in his name. Let the heart of, of those rejoice and seek the Lord. Seek the Lord in his strength. Seek him forevermore. And it just talks on about like how good he is. He's a good God. And I just wanted, I, I had this word that... Um, when we take communion, maybe some doubt like what communion is. Maybe it doesn't work for them. But I just want to give you uh, something that w the power of communion. A while back, about a year back, my wife and I, uh, we were in Portland at that time. And we were at a prayer meeting. We just finished up. A, it was a 24-hour prayer intercession. And we were finishing up our fast with communion. And my sister and my brother, they live in Florida. They call me. And my sister, they're, they're in prayer and you know, intercessor as well. She's like, I just feel such a demonic attack. And we're like... And she's like, it feels, you know, demonic. And my wife and I were like, well, let's do communion. Do you guys have communion? We're like, the elements, right? So we did it over the phone. While we're driving, we read the word. We spoke the word. And the power of communion, this, I just want to remind somebody what it does. That next morning, she's like, I felt all symptoms leave. All that attack that was happening upon my body, I felt healed. So just that's, that's what communion does. I want to encourage somebody that when we take it, don't just doubt that we're just doing another just uh, routine or something. It's not a routine. There's power in communion. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's not a routine. That's right. That's right. Holy Spirit, have your way in this last part of service by ministering truth to us. We ask you to speak truthfully to our inward parts. That would be our soul. That would be our heart. That would be our mind. Speak truth to us, Holy Spirit. You've prepared us to receive it because you're so good. You're so enjoyable. So any truth we receive from you, we can also receive the grace to live into it and walk into it and become it. So Holy Spirit, have this time through the Word of God to transform us and empower us for this new year. We say help. Help us. I mean it. Help us. I truly mean it. We need your help, Holy Spirit. As long as you're with us, we'll be all right. You teach us how to pray. You teach us how to live and move and have our being in Christ. You teach us how to think. You teach us what to put our hands to and what not to put our hands to. You change us. You, you give us rest at night. You free us from anxiety and fear and trouble. And you fill our homes with every good thing we need to do the work of God. In Jesus' name, we acknowledge you. Amen. Stand with me as I read this verse. I don't know how far we'll get, but we'll do something in the word of the Lord. Philippians 2, 12 through 13. Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, say that over yourself, I'm an obedient, I'm an obedient Christian. I will become, I will become an, even an even more obedient Christian. Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, notice, obedience comes after being what? Beloved. No obedience outside of love pleases God. Know that it's who you are, it's your identity in Him to be a recipient of His love, and therefore you can obey Him. It's not work. 
Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, so now not only in my presence, but much more in my absence, work out your own salvation. Say this, I've got work to do this year. I've got a Bible to read this year. I've got a soul that needs the word of the Lord planted inside of it. Much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who works in you both to will and to work for his good pleasure. In Jesus' name, you may be seated. You've worked on you. Others have worked on you. Satan has worked on you. Hell has worked on you. The flesh has worked on you. Life has worked on you. How about it's time for God to work on you and to work not only on you, but in you. This verse we read is so encouraging. Matter of fact, there's many others like it in that God is working in you. There's so many other verses that show what God is doing inside of you. If you ever get discouraged and you ever feel in your faith you're just weak and you don't know what's happening, pick up this verse and, do, and then do a chain reference thing where you find all the other verses that depict and tell the story of what God is doing inside of you even when you can't feel it. Why is this word important for you to receive today? Because you are the beloved. Because you are so loved by him, therefore listen with your ears what the Spirit has to say to you right now. Because you're loved. Oh, Lord, you love me so much, therefore I give you not only my heart, but my ears. Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. Tell me what you want to tell me. Say to me all the things you want to say to me. My ears are yours. This word is for you because you are the beloved. Therefore, my beloved, have you, as you have always obeyed, so now not only as in my presence. How does, how does Paul know they've always obeyed? H- had there been times where maybe there wasn't perfect obedience? Yes. Maybe, probably. Can there be a church where there's perfect obedience all the time? Possibly, yes, I think we can get there, but it's not always the case. But I think Paul here was prophesying and declaring something over them in spite of their mistakes, as you've always obeyed or as you've always yearned or tried to obey. So now much more in my absence, not only in my presence, Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who works in you both to will and to work for his good pleasure. God is willing in you and working in you for his pleasure. God is friends with you, not for your pleasure, but for his first. And you will come to find out as he is pleased with your life, you will find pleasure and you will be satisfied. The longings of your soul will be satisfied. What's he doing when he's working in us? He's overcoming your failures. We have a lot of them. I failed this year in areas. The Lord is working in me to overcome failure. He's working in you to overcome failure. Failure doesn't separate us from God. The righteous know how to get up again and again and again and again. And to say there's more, there's more, there's more. I will continually give myself to being purified and refined and defined by the holiness of God. He's overcoming your failures. He's crashing in on your shame with his reckless love. Man, how many of you have been overwhelmed by shame and his love comes and wrecks that thing? And he overwhelms you with how much he loves you. You know, this thing happens with my wife, and I won't get too into it because it's her secret place, and I don't want to expose her, but it's almost dangerous for her to be on a treadmill when she's worshiping the Lord. (laughs) Because if she has a moment where the Holy Spirit says to her, I love you, he needs to protect her from going crazy on that thing and flying off of it. Because he loves to wreck her. With his love. The other day, she's like, I can't believe how fast I was running, how much time went by as I was just getting loved on by the Lord or how I stayed on the treadmill. But he wants to wreck you. He wants to destroy your shame, your condemnation, the weariness of pain that you've been through. Romans 8 says it. Therefore, there is no more condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. 
For the law of the spirit of life has set you free from the law of condemnation or sin and death. He, he didn't come to just kind of set you free. He came to really totally set you free. He's washing you with his tender mercy and setting you on fire with his truth. He's working in you. Come on, we need to talk back like that baby. Give me an amen. I, um, very interesting, when I was preparing this word, I felt the intensity of the Lord. And then after our worship this morning, all I feel is like really at ease with the Lord. And I'm like, Lord, I can't preach this word when I'm this comfortable. Uh, something needs to stir up. So I'm losing my agenda, whatever it's supposed to look like. I don't care. Let me give you some cross-references to verse 13, 2 Chronicles 30, 12. The hand of God was also on Judah to give them one heart to do what the king and princes commanded by the word of the Lord. Notice this. The Lord commanded something, and then he put his hand on them to do it. 2 Chronicles 30, 12. The hand of God was also on Judah to give them one heart to do what the king and the princes commanded by the Lord, were commanded by the Lord. Say this over your life. God, I want your hand on me. God, I, cannot, I cannot obey you without your hand on me. So put your hand on me so that I can follow you. In Jesus' name. We need him to serve him. That's why we say, Holy Spirit, help me. Oh, some of my spiritual heroes, man, they, behind the scenes, they depend so heavily upon the Lord in their secret place. They, they don't play games in there. They, they run to the Lord. They cast themselves upon the mercy of God. They ask for his help. They admit they can't do anything apart from him. They're, they're honest and transparent about that. They have nothing to do in and of their own strength. Isaiah 26, 12, O Lord, you will ordain peace for us, for you have indeed done for us all of our work. Wait, I thought I'm supposed to work out my salvation with fear and trembling, and Isaiah 26, 12 says, you've done for us all of our works. The work of salvation, you in your wretched sinfulness getting to a holy God, you could not do in and of yourself. He did that work. He initiated and provided the platform of righteousness called being born again, called justification, that now gets you in through the door to experience the avenue of sanctification, which is where you work and partner with the Holy Spirit, as he's already done his work in you. It's fascinating to think that right now in this moment, from before the beginning of time, God has ordained good works for you, and in his mind, they're already done. They're already accomplished. You've already achieved them. You just have to yield. You just have to give yourself to him. You just have to acknowledge he is working in you. Yes. Say this over your life. Matter of fact, shout this over your life. God, work your works in me. 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 In Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Acts eleven twenty one. And the hand of the Lord was with them. Yeah. Hey, yeah. You can. <laughs> I purposely don't want to give too much instruction because I want you to be free in the spirit. And the hand of the Lord was with them, Acts eleven twenty one. 21. We want the hand of the Lord with us. We have no strength with, with our own hands. We want his hand. I had a dream the night of Christmas. I was in a driveway when a man limped by. His leg was greatly crippled by the enemy. What I love about this dream is that in the dream, there was zero hesitation to go after the hurting person. In real life, I hesitate at times. When I see something of the enemy crippling an individual and the Holy Spirit says, go, I hesitate. And I don't even want to go through the excuses with you right now because I don't want to give you an excuse to have excuses. <laughs> but in life, there's hesitation and I repent for hesitation. 
But in this dream, there was zero hesitation. I think God honors those moments when there's zero hesitation and there's complete, immediate obedience. This man limped by. I was in this driveway. I saw his leg. I called to him immediately. Come here. Let me pray for you. He came quickly. As I prayed, I sensed the assurance of heaven's authority. How many of you, when you, when you pray, you want to sense the atmosphere, like the weight of heaven's authority on you? Like, like, I believe the Lord wants to get us to a place where we're not trying to grab faith and we're not looking for faith and we're not like, where is it? Let me get it. Let me stir it up. Like, I think this thing's going to start resting upon us so heavily that to ignore faith is going to be the problem. It's going to be a challenge not to feel the weight of heaven's authority upon you for the sake of another human soul. I'm believing for this anointing this year that faith will be so eruptive and heavy upon our souls that we will have immediate obedience to help those who are in need that the Lord wants to set free. In this dream, there was a weight. There was assurance of heaven's authority. And there was a weight on my hand as I laid my hands on the man. I felt like there was a bigger hand on top of my hand as I laid my hands on the man's leg. There was an assurance in my tongue as I spoke to the leg in the power of Jesus' name. The leg immediately shifted and cracked and was restored. It it was so apparent to me that as the man was being healed, I was like, What's doing more damage, what the enemy did to the leg or what the Holy Spirit's doing to it right now? Because there's things creaking and cracking and shifting and breaking and something's happening. But the man did not move. He was submissive and he wept and he cried and he worshiped God as God did surgery on his leg as I felt this weight upon my hand and the man's leg was healed. He He was healed so easily, so effortlessly because the hand of the Lord was upon me, and I knew it wasn't me. And as I woke up from that dream, beloved, I believe the Lord wants to put his hand heavier upon us for the breakthrough of others this year. Do your works through me, Lord. Put your hand on my hand, Lord. Give me the faith of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Give me, matter of fact, just go right to Jesus. Give me the faith of Jesus. All other examples are in the shadow of Jesus as our great example. Give me the faith. If, if Jesus said, listen, Jesus did more works that could be written about. And then he said, them who are coming after me will do greater works than me. That's the Lord. That's the Lord that said that you will do phenomenal, amazing works through his hand being on your hand. 2 Corinthians 3, 5, not that we are sufficient in ourselves to claim anything is coming from us, but our sufficiency is from God. We cannot claim that any of our sufficiency comes from ourselves. Our sufficiency is from God. We want power this year. We want breakthrough this year. We want signs and wonders this year. What if we run into this next year with a complete dependency upon the sufficiency of Jesus Christ and we repent of our own sufficiency? And we start finding our strength in him and him alone. John 3, 27, a person cannot receive even one thing unless it is given to him from heaven. Pray this with me. Jesus, ready me to receive more. Jesus, ready me to receive more. For I cannot receive even one thing unless you give it to me. So by faith I receive. Don't worry, we're not going to get through all this. Number one, not only in presence, but in absence. Paul says something very unique here about their obedience and their salvation being worked out. Not only as in his presence, but in his absence. How good it is to be stirred up for godliness when in the presence of a spiritual hero, right? Right? Sometimes we chase these people down. Sometimes we go to these conferences and we want to learn and we want to receive an impartation and we want to grow and we want to see how someone else has worked out their salvation to the point of having such a harvest and such a success. But what about the times when they're not there and no one else is around and there's no other stimulation or encouragement coming into your life? 
What's left of obedience and zeal when there's nothing other than the sobering and subtle presence of the Holy Spirit and Him alone who never leaves you nor forsakes you in your most vulnerable and loneliest moments? That's, that's when we're called to really work out our salvation. In the stillness of our most lonely, vulnerable moments. And I, I don't even know if I should say that because there's really no truly lonely moment with the Holy Spirit present. Matter of fact, when all others pull away from you and you realize you have nobody, it might be the first time you finally enjoy his friendship on a whole nother level that he was eager for you to enjoy that you never had before. And you get to realize he was there the whole time and that he's all you need. Paul says, much more in my absence, but I say, Paul, I need you. I want to hang on to you. I can't grow without you. Don't leave me. I'm scared to figure this whole salvation thing out on my own. You're my apostle. You're my teacher. You're my shepherd. You're my pastor. You're my leader. I need you. And Jesus said, it's to your benefit that I go. See, there's something really, really good waiting for us. If we can let go of our dependence on some people. It's the presence of the Holy Spirit. Jesus said, it's to your benefit that I go away. For in my absence, you will not be on your own. The comforter will carry you. This is so important to grasp for those of us who never caught the eyes of our Father. We sometimes still find ourselves clinging to a human influence in order to grow. But God is working in us to free us from this clingy insecurity to people. Yes. His solution is the Holy Spirit and nothing else. Wow. It's Him. Amen. Holy Spirit is the most hidden, dormant, forgotten, neglected person of the Trinity. And He is God. Wow. He's actually the one who caused everything to be made. When the Father spoke by the authority of Jesus. He's actually the one that raised Christ from the dead. He's actually the spirit of resurrection. He's in you. You're a temple of the Holy Spirit. You are his temporary home until he gets you to your everlasting home. He's in you. This is God himself living inside of you. His solution to free you from all the insecurity of everyone we cling to is the Holy Spirit. He's, affir he's affirmed you in Christ. He's given you heaven's attention. There's a cloud of witnesses shouting over you, run, 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 because he's working in you, because he delights in you. I'm praying for us in this anointing for the reality of the Holy Spirit's presence alone to be enough for us, to shepherd us in godliness when all of the other natural influences are absent. Number two, if you work it, it works. If you work out your salvation, it works. If you open up the Bible and read it with all your heart, it transforms you. It does. If you make time for God, he will meet with you. If you seek him with all your heart, you will find him. If you love him with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, you'll experience him. If you work out your salvation, it works with fear and trembling. Listen to this. Stop working out other people's salvation. It's exhausting. Work, I, I wish the scripture would have said, work out your own and everybody else's that needs to get fixed. I'm sure my wife prayed many times, fix my husband, Jesus. And Jesus said, I'm not hearing that prayer. I want to fix you. How do I know that? Because I prayed that. Fix my wife, Lord. And Jesus says, nope, I'm fixing you. <laughs> Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, not somebody else's. So many Christians are worn out in their faith because they're critical and skeptical and judgmental and trying to fix and change everybody else's faith. And you know what? You know what comes of that? Shipwreck. Shipwreck. They shipwreck their faith. They lose their faith in God. They fall away. They, they walk away. They, they, they pierce themselves with so many pangs of self. 
There's enough in you that still needs working out to keep you more than too busy to worry about the plank in that other person's eye. It's your job to help another by being in submission to the Holy Spirit and letting the Holy Spirit work on them, intercede for them, love them, encourage them, walk in mercy, stay unoffended. Furthermore, God working in you doesn't mean you do nothing. You have a mysterious and great salvation to work out. That's why in these, in these Sunday mornings of worship, God's done his part. It's our turn to work out our salvation by how we choose to worship him. Will we be complacent or lukewarm or hold back or think it's just another Sunday? Or will we activate and stir up our faith and actually work out our salvation and say, I don't know how long worship's going to last this morning, but I'm going to give it my all until I'm tired afterwards. I'm going to give it my all until my flesh is tired And I know that the only thing strong in me now is my spirit. Your work is this, to yield to him, to depend on him, to allow his correction, to willingly admit you need his help functioning by his word, to surrender, to believe. When you come... When you come into a word in the Bible that's too hard, you tell him that. You, tell, you say, Lord, this is too hard for me. And the Holy Spirit says, yes, I know. Ask me for help and give me time to work. Help me with my love of money, Lord. I know it's there, but I need your help. Give me time to work. Help me with the lust I'm still struggling with, Lord. Give me time to work. Purify me. Make me holy. Make... Help me, Lord, with how much I want to watch TV and movies and entertainment. Help me regain my love for your word and be able to open up the Bible and not fall asleep in five minutes when I can stay awake watching a movie for two hours. Help me. Help me. Talk to the Holy Spirit about these things. That's working out your salvation. That's working out your salvation in partnership with the Holy Spirit. Working out your own salvation is not, I'm going to do this whole thing in my own strength. You need his strength. He's the one that anoints us and helps us to love Jesus and to care about Jesus. Stay faithful. Keep showing up. Guard your hunger and your thirst for righteousness. Psalm 37, 7, quiet your heart in his presence and pray. Keep hope alive as you long for God to come through for you. Paul lays this out in verses 14 through 16 later on in this chapter. Practically, one of the ways you work out your salvation with fear and trembling, verse 14 and 16, don't grumble or dispute, but hold fast to the word of life. Spend less time grumbling and disputing and get into the word more. Be quiet more. Still and calm yourself before the word of the Lord. It's one of the ways he says to work out your own salvation. He says, he says, with fear and trembling, which is reverence and awe. Reverence means you respect him, you honor him, and your honor of him allows him to change you. Reverence means you care enough about God to care about your salvation with the same weight and to the same extent that he cares about it and did something to ignite it. Think about this. If he gave his life to unlock salvation for you, then the unpacking of such a great salvation should also be apprehended by the laying down of our own lives in response to him laying down his life. Yes. Amen. Hebrews 11 said, Noah, with reverent fear of God, constructed the ark. Hebrews 11. Noah received a revelation. God did his job. He showed him something. And then Noah had reverence and fear of God as he was constructing the ark for years and years and years. What fueled the work of Noah's salvation? Fear of God, respect of God, honor for God. God spoke something, released something, and then basically said, now walk in it, now do it. I will anoint you and empower you to fear me, to be in awe of me, to respect me. Are we in awe of him? Are we captivated by his glory? Are we yawning through worship? Oh, help us, Jesus. Prick my soul. Sting me with your holiness. Cut me open. May I not just lukewarm sing through the worship. Are we stirred and trembling in the depths of our soul because of his goodness? Isaiah 66, 2. These are the ones I look on with favor. 
How many of you want the favor of God? How many of you want the Lord to look on your life and give you favor? These are the ones I look on with favor. They are those who are humble and contrite in spirit and who tremble at my word. When you humble yourself before the Lord a little more, you will tremble before the Lord a little more. Does his written word have your attention? Are you in it? Is it in you? It should be. Get used to normal being the constant awe of God and staying tethered to his word in this next year. Get used to the normal being the constant awe of God. And just a practical note, you know what fosters the awe of God? When you talk about him. Not when you talk about people, but when you talk about him. Man, I felt the Holy Spirit in moments so heavily, and then I say, I say something about someone, and all of a sudden I feel him come out of me. And I know I grieved him. Holy Spirit, where are you? Repent of that. Say you're sorry. And talk about me. Laura and I last night were just laying in bed talking about Jesus, and I was like, oh my gosh, what am I going to do with all my energy? I need to go run the streets and preach the gospel. I cannot sleep. What happened? Where did the zeal and excitement of the Lord come from? It came from us celebrating his works over the year or the past two years and looking back on what he's done and saying thank you to him and remembering him. And wow, you know, it just your soul gets plugged into something. It gets taken up a notch. Number three, from the inside out. I think we're all right. I'm going to take till 110. And then we'll just have ministry time. And that's how we'll celebrate the new year. Is just concluding with allowing the Holy Spirit to minister to us. So maybe you should be careful how late in the evening you start talking about Jesus because you might not be able to sleep. All right, Lord, you stirred me up. Now stir me down. From the inside out, verse 13, for it is God who works in you both to will and to work for his good pleasure. How many of you are getting encouraged by this, fed by this? Declare that with me. God is working in me. me. Amen. Apprehending that reality will give you the rest that you need to overcome. Christ in you is working in you, and that reality and truth allows you to rest in his work. That is the Sabbath rest of the spirit we are to enter into. Let it happen. Let it go. Let him work. Behavior does not change will. Will changes behavior. And what it takes is our will being surrendered and at rest to him. And he works in us and produces in us godly behavior. It's really amazing. For God to demand your behavior apart from your will is to make you a coerced slave instead of a willing and dependent son or daughter. God works first in you, then upon you. See that from the inside out? God works first in you, then upon you. How many years did God pull the apostle Paul away unto himself in the deserts of Arabia for three years? Yeah, but there's people dying during those three years. Yeah, there's sick people that need to get healed during those three years. There's people that need to get saved. There's suffering. Those three years, Paul is needed right now. God says, no, I want Paul all to myself for three years so I can do something in him that is going to produce life upon him the rest of his days. When you are alone with God, when you withdraw with God, when you retreat from life with God, it allows him to do something in you so that the next time you're in front of somebody, he can be upon you. Man, the Lord is, uh, that's his jealousy. It's not his self, he's not selfish. God spoke to me last night as Laura and I were talking. I am jealous, but I'm not selfish. He said, when she was on that deathbed, he could have taken her because he wanted her home. Because he was jealous for her, but he told me, because I'm not selfish, I brought her back for the sake of you and for your children and for your family, because you guys weren't done with her and didn't want to let her go. He is a jealous God. He wants to pull you away and have you unto himself so that he can use you 
for the sake of others. I, the Lord, am a jealous God. He works in you. Then upon you. It's one thing to change your behavior because you have to. It's another to change your behavior because you want to. God is taking us from have to to want to. God in you is changing the have to a want because it's a whole lot more enjoyable that way. He's after your will, which is your heart. Then he's after your lifestyle. He is willing in you both to will and to do. He's after your will first and then your lifestyle. Yield your heart and godliness will result. Altered behavior is the result of an inward submission that comes by the revelation that he is working in you first. Before you will, he wills. Before you do, he does. You cannot will towards God unless he's already willed towards you. You're here today seeking God because he's already sought you and found you. You put God at the top of your priorities because he's already put your name on the list of beneficiaries to the new covenant and the eternal inheritance in Christ. You get to love him because he first loved you. You're empowered to do because he's done. You search to find him only because he found you first. You aim to do the works of Christ because you're a recipient of his works first. But again, how, how, how do you really work out your salvation? Number four, by considering the humility of Christ. Prior to these verses that we're reading today, the entire background and thrust of chapter two of Philippians is the humility of Jesus. He talks about the humility of Jesus and then he says, therefore, my beloved... Because of Christ's humility. This is how you work out your salvation. Because of him. The context of your salvation prospering is the humility of Jesus. Don't ever try to thrive or become or prosper beyond the level of humility that he lived in. Don't ever try to become more than he became. If his humility saved you, then your humility in light of his will strengthen the work of salvation in you. And number five, lastly, we'll close with this, by living for his pleasure instead of yours. God's good pleasure is the end game. He's pleased when you conform to Christ, and therefore Christ is formed in you. Let me suggest something. You cannot fight the good fight if you're too busy warring in the flesh. James 4 asks, what causes wars among you? James 4, read it. All these things that cause wars. If you're too busy fighting the wars of the flesh, how can you fight the good fight? Why do we think Christians don't grow? They're stuck in the flesh and the wars of the flesh, which all stem from selfishness, not Philippians 2, not the humility of Jesus, not death to self. You want to grow? Die. You want to grow? Die. Die. Unless a seed falls to the ground, it cannot yield anything. James 4, what causes all these wars among you? In essence, James answers it by saying it's self, which is friendship with the world instead of friendship with God. You want to grow? Let's build our friendship with God. Let's stop fighting all the wars of the flesh in our home, in our marriage, in our family, in our workplace that all have to do with self because we love the world still. Let's start fighting the good fight and get free from self. What if we live for what pleases God this year? What if self takes a back seat? What if we exit the wars of the flesh and run into the fight of the spirit? What if we deepen our dependence upon Jesus in the way we live like him and not above him or ahead of him? What if we behave, what if we behave less like a Christian and more like Jesus? Christianity ebbs and flows with culture and gets redefined all the time, but Christ doesn't change. He's still the one. He's still the standard by which we are to measure our faith. You know how many people say they're Christians? All of them. I'm not even going to name the superstars that do a concert with their clothes off and say, oh, I'm a Jesus follower. I love Jesus. No, you don't. You're not a Christian. You don't follow Jesus. No. How about we come to Jesus and follow him? And he redefines what it looks like to be a Christian. Not just a Christian, but a pure bride. A pure bride. I'll close with this. I want to pray this over you. Hebrews 13, 20 through 21. If you want to receive this, you can stand or kneel or sit. Just put your hands in front of you. I want to pray this prayer over you. And I want to invite 
any of our prayer counselors that are still available to minister today at the altar, please come up. What I'm going to pray over you is Hebrews 13, verses 20 through 21. And Laura, you can come on up here and pray with me. For this year we're going into, we want more of Jesus. So I say by the Spirit of the Lord over you, Hebrews 13, 20 through 21, now may the God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of the eternal covenant, May he equip you with everything good that you may do his will, working in you that which is pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Say, I receive that. that. He wants to lavish upon your life and equip your life with everything good that you need to do his will. He doesn't want to take from you. He wants to give to you. I bless you with that prayer in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I invite you, if you just want further ministry today, if you want to drop some things at the altar and just lay down your life before the king and be refreshed in him, we want to pray for you and we want to minister to you at this altar. There's people available to love on you in Jesus' name. I'm going to have my wife close us. Don't go out of here if you need an encounter with God. That's what we want to pray for, that you would encounter the Holy Spirit. I bless you in Jesus' name. Yeah, thank you, Holy Spirit, for all the words that were spoken today, Lord. Thank you so much that you pierce our heart with your truth, Lord God. We receive all of it, Lord. Thank you that you are wooing us as a bride. We say, yes, God, we come, Lord God. We give you our wills. We surrender to you, Lord God. We submit to you, God. What an honor. Thank you for the grace to walk out your will, Lord. Thank you for the grace to live the empowered life in the spirit. That's what I pray for 2024 for your bride, Lord God, that we would walk in the spirit so that we would not gratify the desires of the flesh. Thank you, Lord God, that you give us grace, Lord God, to deny ourselves to take up our cross and to follow you. I bless your people today, Lord. And as we go into the new year, Lord God, I pray that all the things from 2023 that were not of you, Lord, would just be left at the altar. That they would just be hurled at you, Lord God, because I know that you have something so much better for us. So much better going into the new year, Lord God. So thank you, Lord. We choose this day, Lord God, to run the race with endurance, throwing off those things that easily entangle us and running with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on the author and finisher of our faith, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for every person here, Lord. We bless them. We just pray for protection over every household, over every family, Lord God. If they're traveling for the holiday, Lord God, be with them, go with them. Bring them safety and peace, Lord God. I bless your people today in Jesus' name. Amen.